Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. Should I say good evening? <laughs> Should I start with a good evening? Arsenal, Liverpool, what in the blue hell has happened to all of you today? Unbelievable scenes we've seen in the title race. Um, on a side note, Bayer Leverkusen have won the Bundesliga, congratulations, absolutely deserved, without question, but the Premier League today, unreal. Liverpool losing at home to Crystal Palace, 1-0. Arsenal losing at home to Unai Emery's Aston Villa, 2-0. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Manchester City with the 5-1 win against Luton means they go top two points clear. And it's funny because I've, I've seen people start to say, oh, Arsenal's title race is finished. Well, yeah, it's out of their hands. But to say that it's finished, it's a two-point gap. Anything can happen. City can slip up once. Arsenal and Liverpool, for, for what we know, could, even though it's not looking likely, could win games, go above City, and all of a sudden they're back in the title race. So it's tight. But that's the title race. That's not concerning us. We are going to talk about Chelsea. <laughs> We're going to talk about trying to finish eighth or seventh. Um, some would say sixth, but realistically, goal difference to Newcastle is pretty uh, crazy, and that is definitely out of our hands as it stands, unless if Newcastle slip up in future, we will see. But Chelsea have to not slip up. That's the problem. I've not. It, it, Chelsea need to sort themselves out and then need other teams to go in hand with what we need them to do. This is the, the, the big task at hand. It's a six point gap from us to Newcastle and Manchester United. We've got the games in hand now. We've got two to play with six points in between. Mathematically, we are right there. If we want it, are Chelsea going to do enough to be able to get it, though? How many opportunities have we had and we've thrown out of the window? Against who? Against teams that are fighting near the relegation zone. Lo and behold, Everton are fighting near the relegation zone. And you could argue through no fault of their own. They had points deducted, then points reinstated, then points deducted again. Now they, they've had two points deducted again, which is why they find themselves with 27 points. Sitting in 16th right above the relegation zone. This is no playing or joke matter for them. They're two points ahead of Luton, who are in the relegation zone in 18th. Everton need points. If not, they're, they're in danger of going down. They're coming to the bridge. And Chelsea's next game is against who? Arsenal at the Emirates. Now, I know some people are going to say, oh, no, but Eunice, look, they lost to Aston Villa today. They're beatable. Yeah, they're beatable. But they're beatable against Unai Emery's Aston Villa. What about us? How have we been playing? What have we looked like? We've looked like a joke, let's be honest. We've looked like an absolute joke. And when I look to the shortlist that has come out today in terms of the managers that we might be going for in the summer, what are we doing? What are we doing? De Zerbi, Thomas Frank, Eddie Howe. That's the shortest. Are you flipping kidding me? You know, that's, that's what you have to, that's the first instinct that you get is like, are we serious? Some people have actually said, you know what, we might as well just keep Poch. <laughs> so it's a lose-lose situation here. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, that's the latest in terms of that. But going into this game, how it's going to go down, what we need to expect. I'll be honest, Chelsea at home, we're at home. I would think that considering the games we had with Sheffield United, Burnley, the manner that we got that United win was just insane. Something that's going to happen once in like five years, right? You'd think, like at home, away from home, I'd be a little bit, mm, if we were going to Goodison, I'd be saying, yo, we might lose. I can't help but think that at the bridge tomorrow, we're going to nick a small win. I don't know why. <laughs> don't try and ask me logic. I don't have any logic. But I just think, surely we're going to pick up three points here. This is the sort of game I look on the calendar and go, you know what, even if we're playing badly, this one is one of those games where you just, you just win. And I'll give you my prediction towards the end. But I haven't really got logic to back up my point. Many people are coming into this game very doubtful. I'll tell you now, listen, if we throw this game away, 
it's 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 chaos. It's just chaos. Like at that point, screw it. We might as well just not play another game this season. It's just done. We might as well just forfeit. If we don't pick up something tomorrow, and you know what, people are gonna say, oh, but we've said this for the Sheffield United game. We've said this for the Burnley game. Yeah, we did. But we always get given another opportunity by the other teams to get ourselves back into it. Like now, six points off of sixth and seventh, with two games to go, two games in hand. Sorry over those teams, which means we can equal those points and then take it all to the final day and see where we end up. It's another opportunity that we've been given, which is why I'm saying once again, if we throw this one away, it's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's an absolute wrap. So what can we expect? Chelsea's injury news is... There's one concern. There's one concern here for me. Now, I can't show you the screen and whatnot on, on here because I'm, I'm trying to adjust everything and make sure I have what it takes to be able to get that done for you very soon. But, me being away. But, the current injury news, De Sassi is going to be out, um, it seems like, and Enzo Fernandez is going to be out, it seems like. They both miss training, they've got minor issues, they should be back for the City game, we've got to play City in the Cup semi-final. But, this game is looking like they're not going to be there. That's not really a concern in terms of De Sassi, but it's a bit of a concern in terms of Enzo. Why? Because we've got Thiago Silva that came back and actually put in somewhat of a decent display, despite us drawing 2-2 against Sheffield United. Silva was all right, and he scored. You can play a centre-back pairing of Silva and Chalaba, for example. Some would say Badiashile, but I would go Silva and Chalaba. I'd bring back, you know, the one of the old-school, two cool partnerships that was looking somewhat decent. Go with Silva and Chalaba. But in midfield, we don't have anyone to stick alongside Caicedo. Unless we do one thing, which I'm going to come to very shortly. In terms of the other players, Sanchez is out, Sterling is out. Um, they're suffering from illness, apparently. Ben Chilwell could return. He's been missing the past three matches. Is he going to play? Pfft, not so sure. To stick him into a game straight away? Not so sure. But he's gonna, he might be available. So, bearing that in mind, Everton... Calvert-Lewin is looking like he's going to be available after he had a minor hamstring. Um, Gay and Onana will return, so that's going to be their midfield pretty much locked up. Um, whilst long-term absentee Dan Juma is expected to make the squad, so they've not really got injury problems. Everton have a, basically a full squad available, which might cause us a little bit of concern, especially with the midfield with Onana. This is why I'm going to talk about the midfield battle. Now, if we're going to go into the starting eleven, what should we do? How should we play? Well, listen, Gusto on the right-hand side, Petrovic in goal, of course. Gusto on the right-hand side. I would go Silva Chalaba in the, as a the centre-back pairing. On the left, I should we go Kukureya? Oh, my God. These are, these are the problems with this, with this, with this team. Sometimes you, you, you want to choose one player and then you realise what they did and it's like, oh, my God. But Chilwell's just come back and... We'll go with Kukurea. To start off with, we'll go Kukurea. In midfield, this is the problem now. Caicedo, when you put Caicedo alone without protection next to him, he gets overrun. Players run past him for fun. We've not got a choice tomorrow but to put Gallagher alongside him. It's as simple as that. Gallagher alongside... Uh, Caicedo. In front of them is where I think you have to move Palmer into the 10. Unless, unless, and this is where I am leaning more towards. If Chukwameka is available, I'm playing Chukwameka in the 10, I'm playing Palmer on the right, and then we'd have to play Mudrick on the left. We'd have to. And then Jackson up top. I would say Madueke deserves game time, which is why I wouldn't be entirely against having Palmer in the 10, Madueke on the right, and Mudrik on the left. I would be interested to see if Madueke can play on the left as well, because we've not tried that, and I don't know if he can or if he can't. I don't know. But as a winger, you'd think that someone with his profile should be able to play on the left. So that's the debacle that we have going on. I would like to play a striker up top and put Jackson on the left because I think Jackson can be pretty uh, effective on the left, but we ain't got that. We haven't got another striker and I'm not playing Palmer in a, in, 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 as a false nine. So this is the debacle we have. So I wouldn't be 
against either Chukamaker in the 10, Palmer on the right, Mudrik on the left, Jackson up top, or Palmer in the 10, Madueke on the right, Mad Mudrik on the left, Jackson up top, I wouldn't be entirely against either of those. So let me know what you would do in the comments. How would you set up? But that would be my start in 11, as I would normally say before the transition. And I'll come to the prediction now in terms of the prediction. As I tell you guys to make sure that you are here tomorrow for the review, there's not going to be a watch long. As I've said, I'm away. So it's in terms of streaming and whatnot, it's difficult. Um, but in terms of watch, in terms of the review, I will be here post-match and I will give you my thoughts straight after the game. So make sure you're subscribed. Check out the socials in the description and on screen. I can't help but think, I, this is one of those games, like I said, even with us playing badly, I can't help but think we just win. <laughs> it's just a bad day at the office for Everton and we just win. I'm going to go... I want to say 2-0. I want to say 2 And you know what? 2-1. 2-1 Chelsea. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm saying 2-1 Chelsea though. I'm going to say Chelsea 2, Everton 1, call it a wrap. That's where I'm ending. Let me know your predictions. I wouldn't be shocked if something else happened. If we drew or if we even lost, it wouldn't surprise me, right? And I'll come and tell you that in the review. But I don't know why I just think we're just going to get one of those straightforward wins. And then we'll probably struggle in the games to come. So let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. I will catch you straight after the game tomorrow. Have a good one. I'll see all of you then. Take care, people, in a bit, and peace.